All right. Greetings and much love, Adventist and Identity. Let's just make sure that we have a little thing going on here. All right, so it's been a it's been a while since I've been live on AI. Just playing around with the effects here. <laughs> Oi! All right, so pleasant night to everyone in Adventist Identity. If you have not seen my face before, I've not been I've not been live in 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 a while. Hello, Odiella. Awesome seeing you here tonight. <laughs> yes, as I was saying, um, I have not been live in Adventist in Adventist and Identity for a while. It's actually been too long, All right? But I'm I'm actually grabbing the opportunity here tonight, as um. I actually asked some questions in this group a couple weeks, actually a few weeks back as to what are some of the questions that you would like um, lives done on and I, I had a few responses from Diana Jameson, from Vince Allen, from Sherry Sam. How are you Odiella? It's a pleasure seeing you tonight. Blessings and much love Holy Sister. <coughs> Um, I've been actually seeing seeing some of the the posts from your ministry, and you're doing an awesome job, fantastic job, fantastic work. I bless it in the name of Jesus that it will it will expand and increase in increase horizons and even in 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 in, in, in even greater proportions. I'm re I'm really impressed with your work. All right. Um, so we had some responses from the from the um from the post that I made asking asking what's some what are some of the questions. So um I think tonight I'd actually just want to get into that. I would not I would I wouldn't be able to answer all the questions tonight, but I actually decided I'll actually I'll actually respond to two. Alright, so actually Vince Vince Allen he asked a question he put, he posted it in the he posted it in the um on the on on the post that I made asking what would you like what are some of the questions that you like addressed through a life in, in Adventist and identity and his post was actually two paragraphs um if I'm not mistaken but generally I, I, I obviously I've not m memorized the entire post but um I understand that gist of the post is that he would have he would like to know if it is actually too if 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 it was actually too you know, he, the, the word he uses actually function like a, a a brat if he was a little bit demanding with with regards to healing and um where the, where the parameters actually with regards to how long a healing should take place all right so let me hit that first and then i actually will respond to the questions that sherry sam asked so you should know vince well i haven't seen you here on us yet but i'm sure that you would see this you should know vince that a lot of people actually think a lot of people actually approach relationship with God as something as of a something of an emotional nature All right um the, to answer that question the best thing for me to do is actually under, bring bring to clear understanding what relationship in a lot of people actually tend to think especially us within the the, the western world hey Elaine blessings and much love holy sister <laughs> I've not seen you in a while. A while. <laughs> Hope I trust all as well. Yeah, so um to answer Vince's question as I was saying, sorry, I just got distracted there again. To answer to answer Vince's question, 
the 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 the, the, the root or the platform upon which the answer exists is understanding what relationship with God is. Now, a lot of people tend to think that we in the Western world, I should say, not a lot of people, but the Western world, we, we in the Western world, we apply our Western understanding of relationship to God and to the Scriptures. Right? Um, now, you may not understand why I'm taking this angle as yet, Vince, but just hear me out. And then you'll understand why I'm actually going to speak, why I'm going to be speaking about this. And the answer to this would actually bring great, great, um, great context as to <clears throat> whether or not you think it's too demanding to approach a healing, right? Hey, Sherry. Blessings and much love, holy sister. <laughs> I'm actually here to answer your question, Sherry, and, and Vince, the questions that I asked a, a, a few months ago. Nancy Napier, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name right, holy sister. I apologize if I have not pronounced your name correctly. But it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. I have not been on for some time due to a lot of things, actually different things but here am i tonight to address this and um i think what we're going to be seeing a little more of me on lives <coughs> addressing these questions and so on all right so um so getting back to vince's question so for those of you who are now joining us i just want to actually just re just um, recapitulate what his question was. Uh, I don't. I I can't. I am not quoting his question, but I understand the gist of his question was: Is it is it is it too much? Is it is it too bratty, as he may have put it, to to um to be demanding with 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 regards to healing, and. Is there a time frame, a parameter, or, or a length of time? Or, or, or uh, he he pretty much asked, um, is there a time frame that that you can look at or reference with with regards to how quickly a healing should take place? So, for those of you now joining me, I'm I'm actually responding to this question, and I'm about to, and I'm about to explain here, um, to give a, a give give some context. As to why, and and as as to the to to the reason why we may think something like that, All right? So, as I was saying, to answer Vince's question, that the, the answer to Vince's question is actually it stands upon the platform of what you or we understand a relationship to be, All right? Now, if you all have actually never given thought to what relationship with God is, I highly suggest that you pay specific attention to what I'm about to tell you. Because it can drastically, and I am not exaggerating, this is not exaggeration, it, it will drastically shift your walk in Christ. Right? Now, a, a lot of the, a, a lot of the, we, we, we in the Western, we, we have the tendency to think that relationship with God is what we understand a relationship to be in the Western world. And here's what we understand a relationship to be in the Western world. We in, in, in the Western world, we understand our, our relationship to be something that, um, well, let's actually first take a look at what a relationship is by definition. Then we take a look at what we understand, what the relationship in the Western world is like. And after that, I'll actually pay, I'll actually give some, 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 some guidance or some light, shed some light as to what relationship is in scripture. Right, so by definition, the word relationship is a connection. Right, by definition, the word relationship is a connection. To be more specific, a relationship by definition is a connection based on um, that, 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 that is actually formed by an agreement. Right, an agreement or what we call or what in, in our legal fields we may actually refer to as a contract. All right, so a connection formed by an agreement. 
Now, um, <clears throat> the agreement is uh, an agreement is pretty much formed when two persons decide that they want to form a connection. And to form the connection, by definition, both parties will actually present what their conditions are to have this connection. All right, listen up, listen up carefully. Sherry, how should I get my dictionary? <laughs> no, Sherry, no, Sherry. <laughs> All right, so we, the, the, the agreement is a connection formed. Um, yeah, it, the, the agreement is actually a connection formed. And that connection is formed where two persons pretty much actually discuss, they, pre they, they present their conditions, they put their conditions on the table. And um, once, if, once these persons have actually reviewed the conditions for the agreement and they agree to the conditions, then they shake, ha they, they, they shake hands or they may, be, they, they may sign a document and say, okay, we agree and the agreement and the agreement becomes active All right so it's a connection where persons look at conditions now in our society we see the definition of agreement very frequently and very evidently in the legal fields as well as the business fields All right if you make a legal agreement with someone this agreement is made with conditions actually um, made explicitly clear and once both parties agree to the conditions, each other's conditions, then they may be a signature. Now, this is the same thing in the this is the same thing that actually takes place in the business world. Now, with regards to relationship, with regards to relationship in all West in well, well outside of the the, 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 the legal world before I speak about the Western world. But with regards to relationship in our in 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 um with regards to familiar relationships, um, friends, family, or well, this is familial, and so on. What we, what in the legal world or in the business world we we refer to as conditions, with regards to relationships outside of the legal field, uh, sort of the business world we refer to, to the conditions as expectations All right follow this right so what we do a, re a relationship outside of the business and outside of the legal field with regards to those that you may be familiar with is ought to be by definition it's, it's, it is supposed to be an agreement where that is formed or a connection or um, the relationship is an agreement or a connection formed only after two persons or parties involved they express their expectations and once the expectations are expressed and both parties agree to the expectations then the connection is, is formally formed and there ensues a relationship now the problem is in the western world we do not apply the the definition of relationship to relationship and we actually apply our cultural understanding of relationship to even god which is not the scriptural understanding of relationship so here's what we do in the western world right this is what we are accustomed to in the western world what we actually do is form relationship by emotional stimul stimulation emotional satisfaction a relationship is actually formed as i said by defin by definition a relationship is a connection in the outside of the business well the business world that may refer to the the uh, that, that may refer to um the connection by agreement of the respective conditions what we do in the Western world is that we have a tendency to form relationships or form connections without voicing expectations. 
all relationships in the Western world are purely based on emotional satisfaction. Alright? What makes us feel good? Now, commonly in the Western, in our Western culture, even from family to friends to romantic relationships, and even in marriages, the biggest problem the biggest problem is that we form these connections and we're in, in a we're in we're, we're we're in a actual agreement or an actual relationship because an agreement is a relationship by definition in an actual relationship for the relationship to be formed it would require that persons express their conditions or their expectations and after consideration of the expectations once the expectations are, are, are reasonable and both parties agree then a relationship ought to ensue in the western culture we do not do that right the western culture relationships are very subjective it does not it does not have a reference point so what we do in the western world is that we meet someone whether it be friends family um, romantic relationships or even marriages we, we we tend to form the connection and here's what we do we do not express our expectations so <laughs> So we do not express the expectations, we form this connection and what we do is actually form this connection strictly based on how we feel. Right? Now if you pay attention or do a survey, now for those of you who, who may be married watching this video, this life, you may have a romantic relationship. Right? I'm now seeing Laurie, hey Laurie, my dear and holy sister, <laughs> how are you? Katrina, blessings and much love, holy sister. It's good to see you here. <clears throat> yeah, so yes, as I was saying, what, what we do in the Western world is that we form this connection and there is no, exp there is no elaboration or on expression of our expectations. So, what we, what we literally do. Is that we form the connection without expressing these expectations and so the relationship is actually formed strictly on emotional stimulation now if you do a survey with regards to your friends family and so on um now as i said as i was saying just now that there may be persons here that, that may be married who may be in relationships who may have difficulty even even in family relationships and friendships because of what I because of what I'm explaining here. Right? You form these relationships and do not express your expectations. And so you form this connection based on how you feel. Right? Strictly emotional. Once this person makes you feel good, you think that you have a relationship. Once this person now, if you do a survey, you'll realize that a lot of people in the Western world break relationships because the person does not make them feel good. They, 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 they do not feed their emotional importance. And once they're not feeling, once they don't feel good in the relationship, they say they have a bad relationship. The relationship is not going good because that person is not making them feel good now here's the problem <laughs> here's the massive problem that actually destroy marriages one of the massive problems that destroy marriages relationships family relationships and so on is that and even friendships is that you you form these connections and your expectations remain unspoken when these expectations remain unspoken in light of the unspoken expectations, what tends to happen is that you begin to hold the other person responsible to the expectations that you have not spoken. And because the next person is not psychic, <laughs> they can't 
they're not reading your mind they they cannot meet your your unspoken expectations and because they're not they're not they're not actually meeting your expectations you're not feeling good you start you start you start to mix you start to think that this person is not for me they're not feeling good right so the relationship is all about feelings emotions how you feel now i've said all of that Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl Olson, blessings and much love, holy sister. Now seeing you here. All right. Now, because now I've said all of that to bring me now, what I've just spoken about there. Actually, we speak about in in spiritual relational intelligence. All right. I've not actually started lives there as yet, and I'm going to be. We are um, Kelly and I are actually going to. Well, you all know as Ketura, Ketura and I would begin to elaborate a lot more about those things. In the spiritual relational intelligence so what I'm saying here is actually a very a very um, brief outlook on what relationships in the Western world are, are understood to be and how destructive it is because it is not actually a relationship yeah it's actually an emotional connection that is doomed to be destroyed because nobody's expressing expectations <clears throat> and right so disappointment is inevitable and technically in the western world we begin relationships technically in the western world we literally begin relationships for destruction <laughs> right so i've said all of that to bring to to, to to come back to vince's question right so as i said the the western understanding of the the to answer his question sorry his question the answer to this question is founded upon what his understanding of, or what relationship is, what an actual relationship is. Now, a lot of Christians in the Western world, and listen up very carefully here, because a lot of people actually fall in this and they don't understand why and they're struggling because they don't even understand the first phase, the first phase of your life in the new covenant, or your life in Christ. Is relationship and the Western understanding of relationship is messed up it's skewed it's destructive and it has nothing to do with the biblical understanding of relationship that even God understands what the Western world understands of relationship <laughs> right so because these relationships in the Western world are all emotionally based and emotional it's actually centered around emotional importance how this person makes you feel you're not you're not expressing the expectations so you have unspoken expectations and then you are actually expecting this person to meet your unspoken expectations and because they're not meeting on your unspoken expectations you begin to feel disappointed you begin to feel depressed this person, this relationship is not making me feel good and you think the relationship is going down and when somebody asks you well how are you going to fix the relationship watch me in the western world we are so subjective with, with regards to that concept that people people will actually they run sessions they run um they 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 they, they run classes and sessions and, and and even on facebook they do lives and make suggestions to how to fix a relationship and the relationship is all about doing something to make the next person feel good so they, so they start dinners they start they start dinners and they start actually going to to get flowers and all of these things and really and truly to fix the relationship is to actually express the expectations because the relationship is based on agreed expectations or agreed conditions and once the conditions or the expectations are agreed upon that becomes each party's promises to the other party so technically by definition to fix your relationship is actually to fix your expectations to check to review the promises that, that you have made, the expectations that are there, and to actually make sure those expectations are met. But in the Western world, we actually do not express these expectations and we go to subjective reference points. So instead of actually speaking to the person, Sherry's asking, so you're saying people are flaky. Unfortunately, some so. <laughs> right? 
payment statement and not happy on him. Yes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what is being said. So, um, so they actually go and use a lot of subjective reference points. So they tell you, go and get flowers, buy the woman chocolates, get a nice dinner, put rose petals on the bed. You notice all of those things is a feelings thing. The whole relationship. That's how they say you should speak to the other person to say, I felt. Yes, even that. Yeah, it's all about feelings. So everything that you're doing there is not fixing the relationship by what an actual relationship is there it's actually doing things to stir the person's emotions and and if you've actually done something that's wrong that that, that could have been hurtful that is potentially hurtful you actually in you actually encouraged to do things to stir their emotions to the point that by the extent of the emotional stimulation they would forgive you all emotional everything is emotions right how you feel there's a lot of emotional importance going on now i, I, I don't want to stray too far because i'm actually answering vince's question here now what happens us with us in the western saints western world the western church is that we take this unstable concept of relationship and we apply it to our relationship with God. Does that ring a bell? Let me help you out a little bit, right? <laughs> so we apply it to our relationship with God, and literally, what 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 we do is that we go the 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 typical Western Christian goes to church, and they, what they go to church for is to feel good. I feel the presence of God today. I feel the anointing. You have the same concept? Feelings. Emotional importance. I feel the presence of God here. The anointing. I feel the anointing strong. And when they get up the next morning and they're not feeling the presence of God, the same concept that they're applying to their relationships, to their marriages, to your romantic relationships, to your family, to your friends, whoever, acquaintances, the same concept that you're applying there, you're actually applying it to God. So you get up in the morning and you're not feeling the presence of God today. <laughs> so you start to question, I wonder if, I wonder if I did something wrong. I'm not, feel, I'm not feeling it. Sherry says he loves... Yes, Sherry. That's exactly what it is. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. That's exactly what's going on. You get up the next morning, you're not feeling the anointing. And so you start to pray more. Because you're praying more so that you could feel the anointing. You could feel God. <laughs> All because of your messed up understanding. Western cultural understanding of what a relationship is. Right? A lot of people actually go to church and if they don't go to church I'm not feeling the anointing. I didn't go to church and I'm not feeling the presence of God this week. I didn't read my Bible so I'm not feeling God. So what you literally do is take the same concept that you apply to your Western relationships to that messed up concept and you're applying it to God. So because you're not feeling loved you begin to look for things to do, just as in your normal relationship, with your with your with your in your Western relationship, typical Western relationship, because you're not feeling love, you're not feeling the person's love. You believe there is a problem, so you begin to buy roses and chocolates for the lady, and you want to buy a vehicle, buy a house, so that you could feel loved. And many people actually in relationships are so that they they. they you don't you don't realize that carrying on a relationship like that, whether whether you um, carrying on a relationship like that, where it's all based on feelings, makes you selfish. Right? They are, they, you are actually very self-important in that relationship. You're very selfish. 
Because what you're actually doing is demanding that that person do what is necessary to keep you feeling good. You hear that? And technically, you are self-centered. <laughs> it's sad. So we take the same thing and you're applying it to God. And because you're not feeling the relationship, I sin so God not talking to me. Yeah. I have to go on a two day fast. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you ain't feeling God's presence. And because you're not feeling God's presence, now you're struggling to believe whether, whether you are son of God. Now get this. So Vince, I'm coming. If you're looking at this, bro, I'm coming around to the to, to answer your question. And it's, ne it's necessary that I actually just touch this lightly. So we apply the same concept. And so, one of the things that we, well, before I, 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 I go down there, now let's actually look at what the biblical context of relationship is. The biblical context of relationship actually is very much referenced by the definition of relationship, which is an agreement. An agreement that is formed, or an agreement that is formed after two parties come into full knowledge of what each party's expectations are, what the conditions are. And once the two parties come into full comprehension as to what the, both parties' expectations are, respectively, each party's expectations are respectively, and it is agreed that they, they, they are willing to meet these conditions, then there's an agreement now the moment an agreement is formed the conditions or the expectations that have been expressed becomes each party's the other party's promises all right this is what we call in scripture a covenant the old covenant and the new covenant now many people actually because of the western understanding of what relationship is they read the old covenant the torah the pentateuch the first five books of the bible they read moses's law and they believe that god came this is the general church understanding of the torah or the or, or, or the laws in scriptures um blessings bonnie Pleasure, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. <clears throat> because of this skewed, messed up Western understanding of relationship is, now you go to the West, now you go to read the Bible, and you're applying the same perspective to the scriptures. So you go and you read your Bible, and you see that God gave Moses Moses law, and Moses read all the law and, the, and told the people you have to follow the law. And if you don't follow the law, you will, if you follow the law, he will bless you. If you don't follow the law, he will curse you. And they're going and, and many church leaders go to church and preach that this is God's divine law and it must be followed to please God. If you check your scriptures directly, go and read the Bible. You'd realize that in the book of Exodus, before that law came into being, God actually presented Israel with 613 expectations the law is two-sided god's expectations or or, or yeah, conditions for god and conditions for israel in the book of exodus it clearly states that before, that that god presented the contract to them expressing what his part of the contract would be and expressing what Israel's part of the contract would be. That covenant did not begin until both parties agreed. Go back go back and read your Bible. That was not some divine law that everybody has to follow. No. A covenant is an agreement. An agreement. And the, 
and in our in, in our in our in our present culture in law and business these conditions are read they are go they are, they are they are reviewed carefully and once it is agreed upon that you're going to meet these conditions it becomes your promise this is exactly what took place with the old covenant it was a contract with conditions what we would call in the western world expectations and when israel the contract was presented to israel by moses all of israel said yes we agree we will we will do this so god had his side israel had their side right that was mutual agreement not what is being taught that is divine some divine law that everybody has to follow to please god no it was mutual agreement and the mutual agreement was set by when one once israel agreed there was mutual agreement on god's side and israel's side they signed the contract All right the contract was ratified by blood <laughs> And everybody else who's actually had to come into that contract had, had to come into that contract had to sign the contract by 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 what we know as physical circumcision in the scriptures. You sign the contract. Right? Now, once this contract is signed, once you come into contract, you are expected to keep your promises. You see, the same or what your expectations what what the conditions are once you actually come in to sorry let's hold one sec john prince john blessings bro <laughs> bonnie jean are we allowed to ask a question sure bonnie uh, you feel free to ask your questions or I'll, I'll, I'll i will endeavor to respond to them in, um, as 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 um, comprehensively as I can in a reasonable time, of course. Right. So what we what what takes place what to, what takes place is once this once this agreement is formed, both parties have responsibilities. It's a contract between God and well, the old covenant was a contract between God and Israel. Both parties had responsibilities on both sides. On both sides, those responsibilities are called commandments. It's not only Israel had commandments, you know. God had commandments. Israel gave their word, God gave his word. Israel promised to keep that. God God promised, God had promises too. So it wasn't only Israel. Now this if you're hearing this for the first time, it might shake your paradigm a little bit. But the command the the, the commandments in particular was not um the commandment the commandments in particular is not specific to israel both parties have re had responsibilities so israel had responsibilities god had responsibilities israel's responsibilities are called israel's commandments israel's promises israel's word god's responsibilities are called god's commandments commandments unto god god's word God's promises. Right? This is the context of relationship in the scripture. An agreement where both parties have expressed expectations. And once these expectations are met, the contract is in order. It is valid. Now, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, this is not different. In the new covenant, we have only one. One <laughs> commandment to follow. What is that one commandment? In the new contract, in the new, co the new covenant, or the new contract, or the new relationship agreement, you only have one commandment to follow. Anybody can tell me what that one commandment is. John Ebenezer, 
Blessings and much love, holy brother. <laughs> I saw your message today, John, and I'll actually respond to you um, late, later on this evening. Have no fear. Eh? Was, was he one? Laurie says, be Jesus. Yes. One commandment. Identification with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. The new contract, the new relationship agreement, is to believe that Jesus is Lord in you. Personal identification with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you were baptized. To baptize, a lot of people actually choose to acknowledge that baptized means to be submerged in water. But to be baptized also means to give a new name. So once you are baptized in, unto Christ, you take on his name identification with Christ Jesus now once once you identify yourself with Christ Jesus you are meeting your contractual expectation your contractual promise so the new covenant is simply that you identify yourself with the Lord Jesus and every contract that the Lord Jesus has fulfilled you are now on the receiving end from God because he fulfilled them all so once because every contract that he has fulfilled by identifying yourself with Christ Jesus you are in contract with God and by identifying yourself with Jesus every contract that he has fulfilled you are now in full you are now found to be in fulfillment of every contract with him and now it's God turn to act now, once you understand this concept of relationship, then, Vince, it, it becomes very clear that you are supposed to be demanding in your relationship agreement with Father. And any, any thought, and I'll, go, and, and I'll actually put it like this, any thought of maybe i'm not i don't deserve or or i am i'm a bit too aggressive in my relationship with god or i'm behaving like a or as you as you may have put it vince that that you you you, you considering whether it may be too bratty to do that according to the contract to the relationship agreement any thought along that lines is unbelief because the contract is identify yourself with the Lord Jesus and every promise that God made to Jesus he is now obligated according to the contract to fulfill which means any thought of um passivity towards the contract is a form of unbelief is that making sense is that making sense to anyone or to everyone <clears throat> i'm saying again you know, because of the relationship agreement the covenant the relationship agreement the relationship contract that says that you in the new covenant in this new contract your only contractual requirement your only commandment is to believe in the lord jesus christ and believe in the lord jesus christ doesn't mean believe that jesus is lord externally it is to believe that christ is in you to identify yourself with christ jesus to take on his name and benefit from every covenant that he has fulfilled any passivity towards the promises of god is unbelief is everybody getting that so when we actually praying for healing so let's divulge a little bit more when when we actually asking for healing now there's a difference here that must be taken into consideration so what is an example of contract jesus fulfilled Actually, 
I can refer to, let's refer to three examples. Jesus fulfilled the contract that was made with Abraham, which is actually referred to as um, the promise made to Abraham. Jesus fulfilled also, the, well, because of Jesus' fulfillment, so get this right, with regards to the promise made to Abraham, because of the promise made to Abraham, once you identify yourself with Jesus, Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 that you are now Abraham's seed. Paul explained in Galatians chapter 3, verse 15, 16, and 17. You can also you can read it there, and he said that Jesus is, is actually, according to the contract that God made with Abraham, Jesus, well, the promise God made, God made to Abraham, Jesus is actually Abraham's seed. And at the end of chapter 3, he says, once you come into Christ, you identify yourself with Jesus, you are now Abraham's seed, which means you are now Jesus, with Jesus, by identifying yourself with Jesus. A, se a second contract that Jesus fulfilled is the whole Torah. The whole Torah is a contract between God and Israel that Jesus fulfilled. Jesus came as the nation of Israel, as a person, in a, in a, in a person, took on all 613 expectations of that contract and fulfilled it. Therefore, every promise, every blessing, every promise of God in the Torah, in the whole law code, is now fulfilled, is now, is now, um, is now, is now, um, what's the word? Is now Jesus's. He has a right to those promises because he fulfilled the entire law. Once you begin to identify yourself with Jesus, you also identify yourself. You you identify yourself with Jesus. Paul says that the righteous and just requirements of the entire law code is fulfilled in you. And now, all the promises in the law, in the Psalms, yes, the law of Moses. The law in the Psalms and the prophets are yours. Another promise that Jesus fulfilled, another contract that Jesus fulfilled, was the contract with David. The, 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 the promise was, the covenant was, that David would actually do certain things and his son, one of his descendants, would sit on his throne. Jesus fulfilled that. And where is Jesus seated? On the throne. <laughs> yeah? Those are three contacts, three contracts in scripture that Jesus fulfilled. So once you identify yourself with Jesus, you identify yourself with Abraham's seed, with Israel, and with the son of David. Therefore, God's part of the contract is now is now yours. He is obligated to fulfill that to his son, whom you are identifying yourself with. So when it comes to healing, any passivity to healing, which would mean that the healing, you expect the healing to take place over time. You work with that expectation. You are in unbelief. As a matter of fact, because there is no way in any of the contracts or the covenants or the relationship agreements that dictate that a healing is supposed to take place in a day, a month, a year. That's not there. What it does say is that by Jesus' stripes you're healed. And so when you need healing, according to the contract, you are standing in full fulfillment of the covenant, of the contract, in identification with Jesus and your healing is now required. Now, I'm not saying that you are demanding of God, but the contract is very clear. You keep your side of the agreement, God keep your side of the agreement. In the new covenant, you identify yourself with Jesus and God will keep his side of the agreement. It's very important. So if you are not identifying yourself with Jesus, 
and you are holding on to promises that's been that may be one of the massive the biggest reasons why you are not seeing fulfillment because you are in contractual breach <laughs> it's that simple All right once you identify yourself with jesus you are in perfect relationship with god because your relationship with god is not what you feel hello michelle carlisle blessings and much love holy sister relationship with god is not what you feel it's actually it has a reference point and your reference point is meet keep your promise and if you come into the new covenant you have made a promise to identify yourself with jesus that is your commandment that is your requirement so the first the first thing that you have to take into consideration is that you have to understand what is your relationship what is your relationship agreement and in the new covenant the new relationship agreement the new contract with god is identification with christ jesus or identification with the spirit of god the lord is the spirit so identifying yourself with the spirit of god is identifying yourself with christ jesus once you're doing that in identification with jesus then the, uh, the only party that has an obligation now is god to his son jesus whom you identify yourself with so you can actually approach that with great expectation as a matter of fact only when you are in a contract can you have faith because once you come into contract faith is actually trusting the integrity of the other person to keep their promises in our western world we do not have faith in god because we apply the relationship the skewed uh, what the, the whole skewed western relationship western understanding of, of relationship which is all about emotional fulfillment because we understand that because we apply that same concept to god we have the tendency to sorry i was saying that only when a contract exists can you have faith because faith is trusting the the trustworthiness of the other person the faith is trusting the integrity of the person to keep their promises to keep their expectations yeah once you're doing that um you you can have faith because you're in a contract if we apply the western understanding of relationship which is no communication of expectations and strictly emotional fulfillment then you'd realize that if you're applying that to god you have never had faith in god you have had hope hope that god would actually just as the same relationship in your marriages and your romantic relationships your familial relationships you don't have faith in the other person what you have is hope a hope that they will treat you nice a hope that that person is in a good mood today a hope that they're not that they're not unfaithful yeah which is not faith that's some desperate hope that god will heal you <laughs> if you understand your contractual if you can if you understand your contractual requirement then you do not have to have hope that god will heal you you have faith that he is trustworthy and that he is a god of integrity and because you are in contractual uh, you are in contractual um you you are you are not you are you are in contractual fulfillment he will fulfill his promise right um so what about the original curses of sin that happened in genesis were they dealt with by jesus yes sherry all right jesus is the seed that was preached and the seed that crushed the head of the serpent so all of that in genesis does not apply to any saint it is it is not it is no longer active on on any saint that's that's for those who have not identified themselves with jesus odiel asks identify with jesus is different than what the promise of healing no what i'm saying with the other is the new covenant requirement is identify yourself with jesus once you identify yourself with jesus you can be very aggressive with the promise of healing because once you're in contractual fulfillment 
both parties have responsibilities in the contract. If you identify yourself with Jesus, then you come into Jesus' fulfillment of all the promises. So if you identify yourself with Jesus, then Father is now, is now Father's turn to act because Jesus fulfilled the covenant. Elijah says, our faith is the emotional connection. Yes, sir, that is exactly what the Western understanding of faith is. And that's why you're actually not assertive with regards to healing. Because you're praying and you're hoping that God is in a good mood. You hope that God will do something to help you. You hope that God will deliver, will deliver you. Because of your Western cultural understanding of what relationship is. That emotional connection. The scriptural understanding of relationship is covenant, contract that come with responsibilities. And once you keep your responsibilities, God keeps his responsibilities. And the whole old covenant was that. Israel was required to keep their responsibilities, God will keep his responsibilities. The old covenant was a twofold contract. Israel keep their responsibilities, God has a list to fulfill. If Israel, having agreed to the contract, do not keep their responsibilities, then God goes to the second list. Now, which is the curses. Now, a lot of people, and I just throw this in, a lot of people actually tend to think that God in the Old Testament was a very wrathful God. The whole Old Covenant begs to differ. See, once you understand the concept of contract, of relationship agreement, once Israel kept the contract, it was actually called keeping your promises in a relationship is called love. Not keeping your, your, your promises in your relationship is called hate. That's why God, it, it says actually in the Old Testament, if you love God, keep the commandments, keep your promises, keep your word. Right? When Israel actually kept it, God had a list of blessings to actually to fulfill. When they didn't keep it, God was obligated by that contract to start the list of curses. That is what they agreed to by mutual agreement. God's love in the Old Covenant is actually very evident because God actually sent prophet after prophet to remind them to keep the promise because the relationship agreement binds him to start the curses. But God was very was was very hesitant to start that and by sending the prophet the prophets he demonstrates how much he loves because instead of instead of actually grabbing the opportunity to keep the covenant he's actually delaying it by sending the prophets begging them to come back to the contract and only when they kill the prophets was he obligated to fulfill his word to keep the contract that was the agreement that was the mutual agreement yeah in the new covenant once you identify yourself with jesus you are showing god um, a universe of love because that is your agreement if you if you love god keep your keep your agreement the new con covenant is a personal identification with the lord christ jesus as lord in you and king in you and priest in you take on his identity is this making sense All right Gloria so how do you explain where you are do, do you just say you have died and there is only Jesus or are you Jesus with a Lori character that will be the first you have died and there is only Jesus any concept of Lori is self lies self-deception <laughs> because once you identify yourself with jesus the covenant says that you is only jesus there any concept of lori is just self-deception does that answer your question my beloved and most precious sister all right so vince i hope i've answered your question that once you're in a relationship with god you come into contract that is your relationship. You keep the contract by identifying yourself with the Lord. Once you're doing that, then you, are, uh, you can live in demanding expectation of fulfillment of the promise. 
And if it says by Jesus' stripes you are healed, once you identify yourself with the Lord, with the Spirit, with Jesus, with Christ, bro, you can aggressively go behind that. And with regards to time frame, there is no time frame. And I'll say this, every moment that you spend, every second, every minute that you spend um, in sickness, in, with diseases, with infirmities, is a travesty against that contract. Now get this. Pay attention. So I just covered first, I what is your contractual requirement? Identification with the Lord. Secondly, that God is now obligated to his son to fulfill the contract. As a matter of fact, you should know that God is so obligated to his son that when his son fulfill the whole old covenant law code, the 613 commandments, and could not die because the law said that once you keep the law, you will have life. N nothing could kill Jesus. Jesus had to give his life voluntarily because the contract of the, the old contract was the old contract was if you keep the commandments, you have life. So Jesus could not be killed. He had to surrender the life. And God was so, so committed to his side of the agreement after Jesus fulfilled it, that God had to resurrect him. God had to resurrect him because God did not get the chance to fulfill his side of the contract as yet. She had to resurrect him. And Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven so that he could be in the body of Christ so that all of us could benefit from God fulfilling the contract to him. And in identification with him, God is now fulfilling the contract with you because you are now, in God's eyes, Christ Yeshua once you keep in the covenantal contract. Now, a lot of people tend to think that that is where it stops. No, it does not. If you look in the Western world, we have the tendency to think that a promise, if somebody promises you something, that you should sit down in patience and wait that is not a scriptural understanding of, of actually God's, God's promises. That is not a scriptural understanding. In the Western world, because of our skewed, messed up concept of what a relationship is, when somebody promises you something, you sit down and you wait. You know why you're waiting? Because you hope the person keeps the person bring what they promise. Hear any crickets? There's helpless hope. <laughs> the scriptural understanding of a promise. Go and check your legal dictionary. A promise is something that can be claimed, that can be demanded according to your legal dictionary which the old covenant is a whole legal code <laughs> right <clears throat> it's, it's it's a law code that governed an entire nation so the scriptural context of fulf fulfilling promises is not the cricket approach where you hope god does something jesus as well as paul give you the the way in which you get the promises fulfilled you know what is that? Go to Matthew chapter 8. And it says that Matthew said that Jesus deliberately went to heal and, and, and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead so that it would be fulfilled. Paul's entire ministry of taking the gospel to the uncircumcised was his deliberate decision to go to fulfill the promise. He, what I'm saying is, fulfilling God's promises is not a matter of waiting. Fulfilling God's promises is actually going purposefully
to fulfill it. That is how it comes to pass. I'm saying again, God's promises do not come to pass by waiting. None of that. <laughs> Jesus went to heal so that what the prophet Isaiah said would be fulfilled. Paul went to preach so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Read Romans 15. It says that Paul made the, pro the promise, the, the prophecy, his concept, his principle. He made it his motivation. Because it says this, go and get it done. It's not waiting. It's moving and getting it done. And so when, with regards to healing, healing is not something that you wait on and hope that it happens. You aggressively, you go purposefully to get it fulfilled. So if you're actually feeling that you're, you're dealing with sicknesses or diseases, get up and fulfill it. It's simply call the promise to your mind and begin to act to bring it into fulfillment. Which means to say if you have a back pain, call the promise to your mind and bend down. <laughs> It's that simple. If Jesus is your reference point for how to get it done, Jesus went to get it done so that, the pro so that what the prophecy of Isaiah said would be fulfilled. It didn't happen passively. These guys went to fulfill it. Does that answer the healing question? You simply call that is the difference between somebody who is acting who is acting in the flesh and acting in the spirit. The person acting in the flesh acts according to what he sees and feels. The person acting in the spirit is actually calling the promise to mind and deliberately doing something to fulfill it. So if you have a back pain, get up, call the promise to your mind and bend over. Bend down. If you have problems walking, call the promise to your mind, get up, and deliberately fulfill it. This is how it is done. That's the scriptural standard. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense. Alright? Everything that I've actually taught in AI over time, if you all have actually noticed, this is the approach that we take in every class that we teach. This is the approach that we take. Every mentor in AI that actually teach classes to bring about healing. Yes, yes bro, objective living. Yeah, Paul said he made it his principle. And the man actually went out and the power followed. If you're using God as the scripture, as your reference point, as your motivation... And you step out to deliberately fulfill it. There is where the power of the Spirit flows. From His perspective. That is what it means to walk according to the Spirit's perspective. This is not sit down there and read, and, and read Scripture until it, your mind eventually gets it. And you hope that automatically it would come. No sir. Jesus didn't do that. Paul didn't do that. No disciple did that. The prophecy says... By Jesus stripes you're healed. With the prophecy in mind, they go and they fulfill it. So if the prophecy says by Jesus, Jesus Christ that person is healed, they bring that prophecy to mind and they go there and say, hey, be healed, bend down. Because the prophecy has to be fulfilled. This is what sons of God do. They act upon God's promises. Is this making sense? So if right now you feel in pain, this thing is very sound. If right now you're feeling pain, go to Isaiah 53 verse 5 or 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 where it says by Jesus' stripes you were healed. Call it to mind and begin to do something that you couldn't do to fulfill it. And I bet you'll be healed. <laughs> 
of course in covenantal requirement by identifying yourself with jesus you do that whilst identifying yourself with jesus the formula is very simple keep the covenant act on the promise <clears throat> keep the covenant which is identify yourself with jesus act on the promise which means you should be engaging that promise as the holy spirit as christ jesus himself is this clear any passivity is unbelief if you're passive you don't really believe the promise <laughs> In, in Hebrews chapter in Hebrews chapter three, it says the promises that God finished all things, and it's it's all there waiting for those who would believe. Act upon it. I hope I hope this is making sense. This is making sense. It is making sense. Say objective living, according to my to, to my holy brother here. How do you break the habit of falling into relying on feelings? Exactly what I said, Sherry. Call the promise to mind and begin to act upon it to fulfill it. That's how you get away from feelings. Call the promise to mind and begin to act to fulfill it. Objective living. If this makes sense to you, right? Objective living. Right? So that's to answer Vince's question. So be very demanding. Get it done. Fulfill it right um the second question i'm answering here is sherry's question which is a very brief question after i've after i've explained all of that the answer here is very brief sherry's next question is how how what is the best way to free someone from um demonic oppression simple do the same thing it's simple use god's promises use god's promises his yes use god's promises firstly identify yourself with jesus that will free anybody of any demonic bondage begin to identify yourself with jesus secondly all of those promises in scripture make it your only truth demons will run from you you don't any no saint requires demonic requires exorcisms and demons to be cast casted out what what you, what your problem is is that you're using everything else as, as your subjective reference point instead of making God's word your only truth. You don't have a problem with demons. You have a problem with mindset, with what you're using as your reference point, on relying on feelings and what your eyes can see. Objective living is taking the word of God for what it says and go, go to fulfill it. And believe that you are what the Holy Spirit is, what Christ Jesus is. That's all. That's all. Right? And with regards to getting your, your, your second question, um, Sherry, was simply... Um, second question was simply how to get healing done. I just give you the answer. Call the promise to mind and go and fulfill it. Begin to do things that you couldn't do. Call the promise to mind Command your body to be healed because of that promise and begin to do something that you couldn't do. And you will be healed. That's very simple. Very straight. Alright? And Bonnie, and actually just throwing Bonnie's question because she asked, she threw the question here again. She asks, what is the sin unto death? Well, that's very simple, Bonnie. Once you understand that your relationship contract is identifying yourself with jesus sin unto death if the covenant gives you life what is death <laughs> if you if you understand that relationship with god is a contractual agreement and you keep your contract by identifying yourself with jesus sin unto death if the covenant gives you eternal life then not keep any covenant gives you death so sin unto death i leave that fear to sort out right there it's very simple it's right in front of you sin unto death i will i attempted to give you the answer directly but think about it if the contract gives you life and not keep any contract is giving you death then 
then not keep any contract. Was he sin unto death that John spoke about? Sherry says, doesn't, doesn't it say Jesus has defeated death? Yes, he has defeated death. But for you to benefit from that, you have to identify yourself with Jesus. So that once you identify yourself with Jesus, Jesus defeated death. That's you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Does that answer those questions? If that answers your questions, type Yeshua. Y-E-S-H-U-A. -E -E Yeshua. Yeshua. All right, so um, I will actually do a next live to answer any further questions. I just decided I'll actually deal with those three questions with Vince, Sherry, and Bonnie. Um, Diana, from, I'm going to answer Diana's question in... I'm going to answer Diana's question in in, um, in Spiritual Relational Intelligence. All right, so if you have not been part of Spiritual Relational Intelligence, I, we kindly, I, kindly, I kindly encourage you to join the group spiritual relational intelligence the group has been on pause for some time i actually posted a video there as to why the group has been on pause for some time but it's actually going to on pause very very soon i'm going to answer diana's question in spiritual relational intelligence um just type it up on the on the search bar spiritual relational intelligence and join the group all right she asked a very interesting question she asked a very interesting question a very useful question and i'm going to answer it there soon all right i don't want to give any date because the last few times i've actually given time frames and was not able to meet it because of because of many different um reasons and so join spiritual relational intelligence if you have not joined spiritual relational intelligence as yet and you have just a question there all right also you all would have actually um just an announcement um you all would have actually seen on zinan Keturah authors and coaches page that we have actually now transitioned from Zain and Couture authors and coaches and we have begun an official ministry and I, I use the word ministry loosely here because it's actually not a church or ministry it's actually an institute it's actually uh, we, we, we've begun the Zain K. Ketura International Institute of Pneumatology all right we actually decided to um we actually decided to 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 begin the to actually take the institute route where this is not this is actually well, for those of you who are not familiar with pneumatology pneumatology is the word is defined as the word that is used or it is defined as the study of spirit spiritual beings or spiritual phenomena it's also defined as the study of the holy spirit and so the international Zain Keturah International Institute of Pneumatology is its mandate. It's the science of Christ. We decided to actually take this as an from as an institute. This is not going to be a related to, to actually move away from religion, right? Because this the the knowledge of Christ has been made a religious affair, and it is my understanding that the religious approach to Christ, it's your biggest, it would be your biggest downfall. To walk out Christ, All right? Um, the on the, the knowledge of the Spirit is very scientific, and we have taken a very pragmatic approach to the Spirit of God, to the Spirit of Christ, to the New Covenant, and have seen tremendous results that we have not even publicized as yet. All right? We have seen tremendous manifestation of what of what this is. All right? So very soon we would be we would be launching the, the official website. My holy brother Tony Myers. It's been a long time, bro. <laughs> My love and peace to you, bro. It's awesome seeing you. Awesome. Yeah, so um the International Institute of in, the Zain K. Ketura International Institute of Pneumatology. Zain K. Ketura means Zain and Ketura. It's actually K there is actually Greek, that means an. So Zain K. Ketura International Institute of Pneumatology. Um, the name Zain actually means God's gracious gift. And Ketura means um, fragrance of God. So you can interchange those meanings there. And so this is actually, you know, is now official. And we'll be launching the website soon. 
right? For those of you who may um, would like to get involved, and actually, we would be launching websites. We would be now moving towards actually creating a, a center. So we're going to be getting a building soon to begin training. So we're going to launch a website first where you'll actually begin to you'll be able to access training in pneumatology. This is not doctrine. The focus of this institute is the science. The motto is the science of Christ. The science of the spirit of Christ. Right? So this is not a, this is not any doctrinal teaching. What we'll be actually teaching would be a, a very pragmatic approach to the Holy Spirit by the reference point of the scriptures. So this institute is actually designed to bring you into manifestation of God and to actively demonstrate the, the fullness of God, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit. All right, as I said, we have we've actually taken a very pragmatic approach to the Holy Spirit and seen results that we have not even mentioned in public. All right, and this would be channeled through this, to the Zane K. Kitura International Institute of, Institute of Pneumatology. All right, um, we'll be launching the website. If you would like to actually assist us in, um, we'd like to, 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 to sew into the costs that it actually, that, 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 that we have for websites and so on, please feel free we will welcome that and please feel free to message us right message us and we would actually explain how you can do that but um we'll be launching this site and we would with within the very near future actually open a, an official office here in trinidad and tobago all right it's actually zane king Couturin international institute of pneumatology because this institute is not going to remain here in trinidad and tobago we will be opening the site opening an office here in Trinidad and Tobago and we intend to actually take this worldwide all right on this site you'd actually have access to a lot of teachings that I've already done as well as teachings that I have not done as yet <laughs> all right and teachings that I have not released some of them are already done but I have not actually released them and so stay tuned we would be launching this site very soon and um there will not only be teachings, we would actually be doing a lot of blogs on the site. We'll be doing a lot of video blogs or vlogs. That's what they call it. That's what they call it. Vlogs on the site. And um, we would we are now we are now officially open. The, um, um, Ketura and myself, we are officially open. We would actually we would officially open for um, any invitations. That may, that 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 may come as a result of this for us to come and do and actually train saints in the again that pragmatic approach to the Holy Spirit, the science of Christ, to train saints to bring them into manifestation of God, to destroy the hindrances and to actually bring you into manifestation. We are officially open for invitations. We would be we would we would actually take up these invitations and message us and we will actually discuss how we can make it happen and we will come to you all right through this institute we'd also here in Adventist identity we would be actually we would actually do um we will be doing a very a long-awaited course of training it's actually the order of Melchizedek where we take this same approach the pneumatology approach and we walk we will walk those who actually do who are participating in this in this in this online training into functioning as a priest you will be very surprised that as a priest that is actually your role in Christ he's a priest king and so you are a priest king in your identification with Christ Jesus and so we have been we have been um very pragmatically functioning as priests and using the information as priests and exercising the authority as priests and we can tell you that everything that is mentioned there with regards to that covenant is very true all right so this course of training will be designed to take you from point a to point b and to begin to function as priests everything is there it's uh, uh, the whole basis of this begins with understanding what what your relationship with god is it's contractual and once you understand it's contractual and you meet your 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 prom you keep your promise 
God keeps his. It's no joke. We are not exaggerating. We have much experience to have to actually affirm that. All right, so look out for the the order of Melchizedek training here, and we will also be doing that officially through the Zin Kekitura International Institute of Pneumatology. All right, that course of training we would be doing, we would actually be um, offering worldwide by invitation, and um, we may have a mission trip coming up. I would not give too much details. A mission trip to the Caribbean. We would actually, we would, we would be um, launching a mission trip. We will. The intention is to launch a mission trip soon. So, pay, so, so, keep keep your eyes up. We would. We hope. We are. We we are hoping to to um to have a mission trip here to, here to the Caribbean to Tobago, not to, to Tobago in the Caribbean. Um. So, keep your eyes posted. That will be advertised soon, and in December, the the, the Zinke Katura International Institute of Pneumatology will be going to India. To John Ebenezer, to, to Pastor John Ebenezer and Stephen Paul in India, to be tester police in India. All right. Actually, we're doing we're going there on behalf. Well, for some most of you will know that both John Ebenezer and Stephen Paul are, are, are um, uh, mentors here in Adventist Identity. So Kelly Ketura and myself would be going there representing both Adventist Identity as well as the Zinke Ketura International Institute of Pneumatology. All right, we um, stay tuned for that. Uh, also, we would have, we actually would be doing some fundraising events to raise funds for the Institute to cover costs because websites aren't free, building is free. <laughs> All right, so we'll be doing some, some fundraisers online as well as locally to raise funds for the building as well as to raise funds for sites for graphic designers and so on um videographers to do these things as well as the the, the as well as raise funds for the trips coming up all right so stay tuned guys we have huge things ahead of us the, uh, i started actually mentioning the reason why we went we we took the zinke Ketura international institute of new of pneumatology approach it's because um, in conversations with Father, he mentioned that with the information that we have, that pragmatic approach of the Spirit, Father was actually concerned that the information that we present can actually become another. It's, people can actually very, very easily take it and form another religion with it. And, and, and as we say here in Trinidad, we is not about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right christ is very very pragmatic observable evidence all right and another concern that we had is that with that understanding the mechanical understanding of the spirit that we will be presenting the pragmatic approach to the spirit that we will present in it's very very easy that persons can take this information make it religious or make it cultish and so father this institute is all fathers doing, all fathers' instruction to open this institute so that this can become an educational institute, an institute of education, so that persons can come and we will be transitioning this the in the pneumatology. We would leave, we will be binding and merging the scientific the scientific aspect of it with it. So that Christ would be presented not as a religious affair anymore, but an objective reality scientifically all right this is the direction of the institute Pragmat a pragmatic approach and a scientific approach all right we the sons of god once they understand the, the the mechanics of the spirit we will change the world all right jesus will become the desire of the nations and the knowledge of god this is our this is our motivation our mantra our principle the, that the knowledge of god will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Yeah? And Jesus will become the desire of the nations. This is the direction of the Institute of Pneumatology. Zain Kekitura International Institute of Pneumatology. Alright, so as I said, look out for the fundraisers. Look out for the mission trips coming up. We would love for you all to join us. To join us here in the Caribbean. And, um, hey, 
may very well we we as we go to India, we may very well they say let's go India. <laughs> All right. So um look out and um look out for the fundraisers and if you if at all the Lord puts it on your heart to actually assist us with our costing for the institute, please feel free. We message us Zin Zin Pier or message Kit um Kelly Key and it will be very helpful. Alright, so blessings and much love. I hope these questions have been answered. Um, hey, one more thing. <laughs> one more thing. We actually have a webinar coming up um, next week. On next week, Thursday, 16th at 8 p.m. EST. That's 5 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. EST. Alright, as a fundraiser. Um, some of you may have be, who, who are, are familiar with the fact that I'm the author of um, of all the religious mindset, and I have not done much advertisement, but I'm also I've also authored. Uh, or Kelly and I have also authored the U R Elohim study guide. That's actually a five stage pragmatic study guide to identity in Christ. All right, as a fundraiser, we are actually running this running this webinar. On um, on 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 YouTube on the sixteenth of this month, which is next week Thursday, so we'll be selling the book and actually presenting some specials to raise funds to help pay for the website and to to actually pay for everything that comes with that because we act as I said we have to get graphic artists and so on to do this work and so we'll be. Uh, running this webinar where we would I would actually go into some of the very to the to the main components of this of the of the of the study guide so that persons can see how the study guide will can dramatically shift your perspective and dramatically bring you into an active um, active engagement of power with God. All right. So on the on the sixth on the sixteenth at eight p.m. EST, that's five p.m. PST as well as seven p.m. CST, we would be um, would be doing this webinar. So you can actually go to our, to our, to to my to my Facebook page or go to my Instagram. That's Zane underscore El Fuego underscore Pier. Join me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, and you will see the image there. It's called the You Are Elohim webinar. All right, we will pre we'll be presenting, as I, I, and I say again, I reiterate. Hey, I'm now seeing Paul Brown. What's up, bro? Have not been on here for some time. <laughs> Mr. Psych. <laughs> awesome seeing you, bro. Missing you, man. I mess. I messaged you recently. When when you get some time, um, please get back to me on 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 that. Um. Yeah. So as I was saying, on the sixteenth of this month, which is next week, Thursday at eight p.m. EST, five p.m. PST, seven p.m. CST, we'll be running the UI Elohim webinar. It's a fundraiser where we would be, we would actually give um we'll be selling these books um to raise funds so we'll pre we'll, pre we'll present we'll present you with we will be presenting some decent offers for reduced prices and so on where we actually create a little package and we and we'll be and we we we, we want to sell that to raise funds for website costs and so on all right, so please go to my Instagram, Zine underscore El Fuego underscore Pierre. You can also go to Kelly's Instagram, which is Ketura, Ketura Bartholomew. Um, you can also go to our page, Zine El Fuego, author, coach, Ketura K, Facebook page. And you will see the, the link there for UI Elohim webinar. All right, please share it. Let it get it around. Let's get the information out. Share it as please share it on your walls. Um, help me, help us, both Ketura and I share the the links so that we can actually 
get this fundraiser up so we can you know get these things rolling all right we want, we we are very excited about getting that website up and running so that we can actually get this information out and get it international all right love you too bro miss you a lot <laughs> My holy and beloved and most precious sister, whom I love the most, this, 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 Cheryl Genest. <laughs> How do you pronounce your last name? Is Genest or Genest? Much, uh, much love, holy sister. Much love. Much love. <laughs> My holy sister, whom I love the most, this, this, this. All right. I, I, I trust that all is well with you, holy sister. You are, you are, you are greatly beloved. And very precious to us all right so I um, I think that should be it here for tonight um, here in Adventist and identity two way <laughs> awesome awesome <laughs> all right so rem remember here in Adventist and identity we, we always have sessions running so please feel free to go to the events tab and see what is the next session up um, that, that may be posted register all of these sessions in Adventist Identity are very practical. This, this, as you all may already know, is is not philosophy here or theory. It's very practical. So, jump in and get active with the classes, right? And and look out, look up. We might very well be coming to your nation, your state, your continent, your island. <laughs> all right so i think i have spoken long enough tonight after so long i have missed each and every one of you and you all actually expect to see me on here and please post your questions on the on the events identity on the post that i posted or on the events identity wall please post your questions i'll be looking out for those questions and i'll address those questions anything that you like some clarity on i will try my endeavor best to give you my most accurate understanding of what you may be questioning all right so my holy sister cheryl blessings and much love holy sister on i actually was here for some time and uh, mouse had i get dry needs to go and get some water <laughs> all right so my holy sister cheryl feel free to actually look at this this um this video i actually this was actually addressing some questions that were asked that I did not get around to answering and I finally decided hey time to get back on that boat and get that and get that and, and, and address those questions. So much and much an abundant love to you my brother Paul Sherry Laurie my holy sister Tony Myers my dear and powerful mighty brother Bonnie Jean Hey Bonnie asks will the rapture occur before after the tribulation um bonnie that is a subject that i would not respond to in this life i'm going to take about a good hour the um i actually i'll respond with this um bonnie that the rapture and tribulation it's actually in time uh, it's actually futurist eschatology that has no scriptural base to it right i know that may be a strong statement for you right now but i i guarantee you i can walk you through the scriptures and show you that that is not going to that is not it has no scriptural base in it it's purely subjective um so short purely subjective perspective All right i'm also seeing blessings and much love savita kisha sherry yes Anybody else that I miss? Elijah, my dear and holy brother. Anybody else that I missed? Um, Derek Gilbert, blessings and much love, bro. Just making sure that I don't miss anybody. Michelle Carlisle, blessings and much love, holy sister. John Ebenezer, my dear and holy brother. John Prince John. Did I miss anybody else? No, I don't think so. Lori says, I'm going to get an island. 
That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm going to, and Sharon says, I'm going to watch, have to watch it. Watch it. That's an awesome movie. I love, I, I like Talk Too Bad, you know. All the electricity running through him. Uh, powerful. <laughs> Alright, so you all have a great night. Um, blessings and much love. We will see each other soon again. Look out. Greetings ahead. Massive projects ahead. And the knowledge of the spirit is going to cover the earth. As your waters cover the sea. Through the Zane K. Ketura International Institute of Pneumatology. Amen. Blessings.